Redditors who knew men caught on to catch a predator before the show, what were they like, part two? This will get buried at this point, but my friend dated someone who ended up disappearing, then we eventually found out he had been arrested for trying to sleep with an underage girl and having to rope and guns in his trunk. It wasn't until a few weeks later that we even learned he was on the show. It just kept unraveling. He had come to get drinks for one of my birthdays, and to be honest, he seemed completely normal. There was nothing that stood out to me as creepy or off. My friend was a wreck after everything happened. She's a smart girl too, and didn't expect anything like that. A-F-A-I-K. I felt really bad for her. Not on to catch a predator, but I had a youth hockey coach who I always thought was a really nice guy. I was like 14 at the time, but he'd always call me after games and give me tips and pointers, and I never found it weird. Just figured he was a good guy doing something for kids. He didn't have any children, though. 20 years later or so, I see him at the rink. To my surprise, he remembers me. We talk for a half an hour. He asks me about my parents. I show him pictures of my family. He starts telling me about this girl that he coached since she was 10 on a girls' hockey team who is now in college playing for a very good school. I'll be honest, I didn't think anything of it. Anyway, we go our separate ways, but do exchange phone numbers. I go home and tell my wife that I saw my old hockey coach and I'd like to invite him over for a cookout. I figured I'd call him over the weekend. Literally, the very next day, he gets arrested for trying to meet up with a 13-year-old girl in a chat room that was really the state police. I, uh, never invited him. A few summers ago, I went out for a dog walk on a Saturday afternoon and there were loads of people outside my house. There was a pedophile hunter group on a sting with a guy down the street. Turns out he'd been soliciting sex from 14-year-old girls sending them dick pics and asking to meet up with him. Charming. It all blew up. He got arrested, got the world's most pathetic suspended sentence, and now he's trying to act like nothing happened. His family stood by him, even his wife, and the whole thing is really quite bizarre. I guess the only fallout was that he lost his job and didn't leave the house for about three months, but it's all gone back to normal now. The guy was also a weirdo, very controlling and rude. He was probably the only person on the street I took an immediate dislike to. There was just something off about him. I guess it is good to trust your instincts. I wonder if he's still at it or whether the slap on the wrist taught him a lesson. Actually, a friend of mine's roommate ended up being one. He was super normal and kind of good looking. He had a girlfriend as well. The only odd thing about him was that he had inherited a bunch of money from his family all in cash. Aside from that, he was in his 20s and you'd never think it at all. He was one of the guys that thought he was meeting a 16-year-old girl or something like that. He also wasn't very bright. It wasn't on the show, but one of my good friends was arrested earlier this year after a two-month-long investigation for a count each of possession, accessing, and distributing CP. With COVID, I haven't seen him since early 2020, but we talked almost at least once or twice a week, sharing memes, jokes, and whatnot. Really good guy, always down to help you out when needed. He was a very normal guy and none of our friends saw it coming. He'd never really had a girlfriend or anything like that, but we didn't really think anything of it. Just assumed he was having the same luck we were dating. Most people we know think he didn't do it, but a two month long investigation is pretty damning. Losing a friend in this manner sucks, but he did what he did and you can't do that. It was my best friend's dad. I slept over there all the time as a kid and hung out. He was relatively normal to be honest, worked a lot. My friend and I recall getting on their home computer when we were younger and there were pictures of trips to Thailand and it looked like he was at some strip club. The strippers looked like children but we didn't think anything of it because we were kids and figured the women looked younger in Thailand. They ended up moving out to California and he got caught on the show during my junior year of college. He called my family and all of the other families to explain that he never did anything to us. As far as I know, he didn't. There was a kid who went to my middle school who went to meet up with this 14-year-old girl who he told he was 21 for some reason. He was actually 13. He took his mom's minivan and drove about 20 miles to go see her. I don't think they ever aired that episode, but I remember hearing Chris Hansen and the rest of the perverted justice team were pissed. Officers called his mom and that was pretty much the end of it. He was at school the following Monday and it was almost like it never ever happened, lol. It was the talk around my small town down there in Georgia though. 
I'm still friends with him on Facebook. He's married with a few kids now. Another not-on-the-show story. A 50-ish professor at the university that I work at got caught in a sting trying to meet an underage boy for sex in a parking lot. I was watching the news in bed with my wife, and when his mugshot appeared, I startled the shit out of her by shouting, Yes! and jumped out of the bed. The guy was just a complete asshole. I was 25 or so at the time, working as the web guy in the marketing department. I had just recently had a meeting with him and his department to demo their newly redesigned department website. They, the art design department, didn't like the new website because it actually followed university standards, used approved colors and fonts, had the required university headers, etc. They wanted to keep their dumpster fire of a website that broke every rule and looked incredibly unprofessional. When I refused to back down and explained that part of my job was ensuring that all department websites met the standards which had been mandated by the president and board of directors, this asshole erupted at me. He started yelling at the top of his lungs about how I'm not a designer and had no business telling them what to do. I was just a couple of years out of college getting berated and insulted by a tenured department chair. I was incredibly intimidated and couldn't stop my damn body from shaking, but since it was literally my job to enforce the rules, I stood my ground. He stormed out of the room. Despite my best efforts to keep my composure, I found myself wiping angry tears from my eyes. A couple of his colleagues tried to apologize for him, but I knew that if I stayed in that room any longer, I was going to lose it, so I quickly got out of there without making eye contact with anyone. Just a couple of weeks later, his mugshot was on the news and I was jumping for joy in front of my very puzzled wife. I remember an episode with a predator who's a doctor in San Francisco. He's tall and scrawny and I'll never forget the way he reacted when caught. He threw his glasses on the floor in absolute defeat. I could tell he saw his life flash before his eyes. I wonder if anybody knew that guy and what became of him. What an absolute moron. Threw away a grand life to take advantage of little girls when he could have had or paid anyone he wanted who's not a minor. I didn't know anyone from that show, but I did know a guy who got caught for the same thing. It was the early 2000s. He was my friend's husband. He met a 13 to 14 year old girl in a D&D chat room when he was in his mid-20s, groomed her, traveled to another state to see her, then took her to New Orleans. He got caught a lot of years in jail. My friend divorced him. He was extremely egotistical and I always hated him. To the right people, he came across as charming. He used everyone and everything he could, named himself after a popular vampire but spelled it wrong. I remember throwing his stupid red lens glasses into the street. He was the type to buy booze for teenagers. Mine is bad. He wasn't on the show but recently found out a friend or bandmate was the worst of the worst. Last December, his girlfriend came home to the SWAT team at her house escorting him out with all the electronics in the house. Turns out, They'd been watching him for years, gathering evidence on other people he was trading photos and videos with. I think he led them down a path to catch a lot of people at the same time. He had a daughter, two years, that was his victim as well. He was finally arrested when he agreed to meet a young boy. He was the absolute last person you'd expect. Nice, funny, great guitar player, and a good friend. We played live shows, had music videos, and a decent album we released. We had to take all the videos of him off YouTube and all music of him off Spotify and shit. I hope he dies in jail. Weren't on to catch a predator, but my ex stepdad was a pedophile. Before he went to jail for his third time, my mom didn't know when she married him, we would see his family a lot. His brother was always very nice and liked having us over. They would sometimes get weird with each other, and his brother would make comments about my body every now and then. After my ex stepdad went to jail, his brother was caught in an online chat sting. He somehow got my contact info when I was an adult and thought it would be appropriate to tell me he was attracted to me when I was 12. Weirdly, they both didn't like each other being alone with young girls and at least once referred to the other as a pedophile. I was too young to really understand it back then. Not on the show because we're not American, but there was a group that was looking for people accessing certain sites and my cousin's ex was one of them. She actually found out by checking his computer but it was horrifying to her. I was a kid around this time, so what I remember from him is that for the most part he was quiet. One thing is in our culture we kiss each other's cheeks as a greeting, but when I did it, I think I missed or something, don't remember exact details, 
and the whole family laughed lightheartedly. I looked back at him, but there was this weird look in his eyes I couldn't exactly understand as a kid, which freaked me out immensely. I remember kind of running away in a weird embarrassment afterwards, but it's a memory that stuck to me for my whole life. A few years ago, my cousin confessed about why they really broke up all of those years ago, and I just remember that specific moment and felt so scared like I did as a kid. It's a face I don't think I'll forget. I worked with a guy who was eventually convicted of raping his girlfriend's kid over a period of like eight years. I would have known him while this was just getting started. Apparently, the guy ran in some pedo circles online and was recognized when another guy got busted with some of the videos my colleague had filmed. Fucking disgusting. I was appalled when I found out, but it honestly pieces together pretty well. Dude is a chubby, quiet, awkward nerd with a Disney obsession and enough tech savviness to think he could get away with something like this. Good at his job, though. I liked him and was a reference for him a couple of times. Bothers me quite a bit to think about how close I was to this creep. Well, he, 40s at the time, wasn't on the show, but he was busted in a police sting. Thought he was meeting a 14-year-old girl at a park, and he had a bag of lingerie for her. He had been chatting online with an officer posing as the 14-year-old. Creepy stuff. Anyway, he was part of my friend group at the time. I wasn't super close with him, but I had spent some time around him in pretty normal group activities. He was a bit weird, but most of our group was, so he really didn't stand out. He would make some pretty odd comments about women, and especially younger women, at times, and usually get mocked for it, but I don't think any of us thought he'd do anything like he did. He was married, happily to the best of my knowledge, and had a really good government job. When news reached our friend group, it was a pretty big shock to all of us, but it definitely brought to mind some of the weird shit he used to say. Pretty sure everyone pretty much immediately blocked him on social media. I don't know how much time he spent in jail, if any. I know he lost his wife and his job. Last I heard, he had moved across the country. He doesn't come up in conversation much anymore, but anytime he does, we refer to him as Pedophile Bob. He was never on the show, but I know a guy who got busted for molesting at least one little boy at the daycare he worked at. Didn't know him particularly well, just saw him from time to time at Yu-Gi-Oh! regionals and shit. He was good friends with this creepy juggalo guy and both thought they were hot shit and constantly talking down on people. I never particularly liked either, but the eventual molester was mostly under my radar, just some jackass I occasionally saw. I hadn't thought of him for years when one day my friend messaged me the news story of his arrest. Apparently the juggalo was defending him until the very end despite having kids of his own by then. Not on the show, but I went to JC with a guy who was kind of awkward and a bit dorky. He had a girlfriend who liked to rip on him pretty hard in front of his friends, or anyone really. He ended up getting her pregnant, and I guess they left the campus and moved in together. They were around 18 or 19, I believe. This was all over 10 years ago. Anyway, out of the blue, he gets a hold of me on Facebook a few years back, chat back and forth for a while, catching up on life. He tells me he had a pretty bad meth problem and moved to Florida to go to rehab and was doing a lot better. I'm all for supporting sobriety and congratulated him about his newfound achievements. A couple months pass and I get a DM from another JC kid that we both knew. He sends me an article about the man we will call B. Apparently B didn't move to Florida for rehab but was running from the cops because of a flash drive that he had found, shown video footage of him assaulting an underage girl allegedly his own daughter. Needless to say, I felt utter disgust and almost anger at B and feel heartbroken for whoever that child is. I remember his Facebook turning into a wave of slurs and prison jokes. His mom apparently got doxxed and started receiving death threat messages after it was made public she purchased his plane ticket. The whole thing was a mess. Oddly enough, I never would have expected this out of him when I was younger, but in hindsight I kinda can. There's nothing he did specifically I can put my finger on, but he had a meek and almost needy puppy kind of personality. Anyway, last I heard of him, he is in prison in his home state. Not sure what he is serving for a sentence, though. Never knew anyone who was caught on the show, but looking back to my youth, it 
absolutely disturbing to remember how many situations I was in with grown men, all who knew exactly how old I was. I'm 39, so we didn't have social media when I was a teen. AOL chat was new and upcoming. I spent a lot of time outdoors, so I knew basically everyone in my neighborhood. My friends were usually my age, but they always had older friends, cousins, uncles who would come around. It started when I was 14, and I thought I was grown AF. I would tell everyone how I was mature beyond my years because a lot of older guys would give me attention and fill my young mind with bullshit. They all knew exactly how old I was. I never lied about my age. I was stupid enough to enjoy the attention too. I thought I was cool as ice because they bought me weed and beer, duh, of course they did, and let me hang with them. I got hit on and constantly told how mature I was for my age. I also got groped a lot, but even though it made me uncomfy, I'd laughed it off because that's what friends did. Little did I know we were all being sexually assaulted and they were just as uncomfy as I was. My situation ended in rape by a man who was 19, whom I justified in my mind to be okay to date because we were both teenagers. I blamed myself for a very long time because I was dumb enough to fool around with him. But bottom line is they all acted the same, gassed us up with compliments, claimed strong connections, bragged about how mature we were, just all around gross behavior. TL, DR, didn't know anyone on the show, but got hit on and groped by a bunch of grown ass men as early as 14. Stupid young me thought I was cool, liked the attention until I was raped. None on the show, but a lot of pedophile teachers when I was growing up. When my parents first moved us out of a really bad neighborhood, we thought things would be better. Nope. Not only did my 5th grade teacher hate male students, he constantly touched the female students. He would run their shoulders and just get lower and lower down the front. He would have them rub his shoulders and feet too, fucking creep. He was arrested a couple years later. My health teacher in high school was busted with CP on his work computer. Later his friend, who was the PE teacher, was caught with pictures of naked gym students on his computer too. This next one was in a gray area. The student was held back a year in like elementary or something like that, so by the time she was a senior she was 18, and this was the teacher's first year working at the district, so there's no way they knew each other when she was a minor. He was young too, like mid-24 or something. After she graduated they started dating. The district didn't like the idea of a high school teacher dating an ex-student of his so they fired him. That was 10 years ago, and they'd married with two kids. <laughs> 